In Manchester City's most recent draw against Arsenal at the Emirates, we saw Erling Haaland tie the record for reaching 100 goals in the least amount of games for one club. In doing so, Haaland tied Cristiano Ronaldo's previous record at 100 goals in 105 games, which Ronaldo set at Real Madrid. Independent of the record break, this game was electric and had Haaland's imprint, pause, all over it. He scored Manchester City's first goal. Then, after Manchester City equalized in the dying seconds of the game, he picked the ball up and hucked it at the back of Gabriel's head. And then after the game ended, he got into a little bit of a spat with both Mikel Arteta and some of the Arsenal players. All in all, Holland got into as much shithousery as he could possibly do throughout the course of the match. I loved it. And even though I'm someone who loved all of this from Erling Holland, I am also someone who's criticized him in the past. Going on the record as saying things like he looks like Ivan Drago with an alternative haircut. Something that I do stand by, by the way. Nevertheless, it seems as though Holland's antics outside of his performance on the pitch seem to be garnering more attention than people actually recognizing the historic feats that he accomplished during this match. As aforementioned, he scored 100 goals inside 105 games, which is insane. But also on top of that, Holland, through the first five games of the season, has scored 10 goals. Now, I don't know about you, but most teams would take a Premier League striker scoring 10 goals goals throughout the course of like 25 games. This dude did it in five freaking games. Yep, for some reason it seems as though everyone's downplaying both of these feats. And let me tell you something, if you were to ask most Premier League fans, La Liga fans, Bundesliga fans, if you were to tell them that they could get a striker that could average nearly one goal per game, granted Holland does, did 100 goals in 105 matches, big whoop, but any team that you were to tell them they could get a striker that would accomplish that, they would take it like that. Yet when it comes to Holland and the goals that he's scoring this season and through 100 games, it seems as though everyone's just discrediting this guy. And granted, to, to a certain extent, I understand why people are discrediting him. Holland's general footballing play has come under fire from the likes of fans, even pundits like Roy Keane, who I've made a whole video about that in the past. However, yes, his general play is not that of the caliber of players who have gotten this sort of output in the past. For example, Cristiano Ronaldo scored 100 goals in 105 matches for Real Madrid. We're not going to sit here and compare Holland's general footballing ability to that of Cristiano Ronaldo. It's not even close. However, the output that he's accomplishing is close to that of Ronaldo, but nobody likes to put their hands up and say that that's the case. And yes, as fans, we want to see the best football imaginable. That's, that's what everyone wants, whether you're an unbiased fan, a biased fan, whatever. You want to see the best football. And sometimes, with the output that Holland gets, it we're not seeing the most beautiful ticky-tack of football. It takes a man on, beats him, buries it. No, it's a lot of tap-ins. It's a lot of goals like the one that we saw against Arsenal, which wasn't a tap-in, but it was a pretty standard goal. But we have to take a step back and, and look at the position that Holland plays. And we have to realize that the purpose of a number nine is to put the ball in the back of the net. And that's what this guy is doing at historic levels. For example, Cristiano Ronaldo scored 100 goals in 105 matches for Real Madrid. I don't care if people disagree with this, but the level of competition throughout the Premier League is much more difficult than the level of competition in La Liga. Real Madrid and Barcelona, you could throw Atletico in there, are unanimously the three best teams in La Liga. If you look at the Premier League, we have something that we call the Big Six. The six biggest and, I guess, best teams in the Premier League. And then when you look at the remaining 14 teams that compete year in, year out, it's competitive. It's never an easy game to go to West Ham at the London Stadium and play them, or Aston Villa at Villa Park. Hell, even Brentford kind of gave Manchester City a little bit of a run for their money this season. It seems as though, with the feats that Holland is accomplishing, fans are just completely taking this out of context, and they're not realizing what he's doing is historic. And yes, does he benefit from the fact that he's in one of the best Premier League sides of all time? Of course. However, I honestly and truthfully believe if you were to just take 
other top forwards and put them into this Manchester City side, they would not have the output that Erling Holland currently has. And at the end of the day, you might not like Erling Holland. You might not like Manchester City. Lord knows I really don't. But at a certain point, you have to take a step back and you have to acknowledge and respect the feats that he is accomplishing. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like to ask you to please like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you know every time I make a new video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.